What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of Legs Will Move. Sorry for the long wait. I've been away for a little while. Didn't have much luck with my uh, giveaway. Got a little bit discouraged, but wanted to share with you uh, some tips that I have for traveling to Argentina and specifically Patagonia. I've been uh, looking at some of the stuff, been thinking about going back, and I've just felt like all of the resources that I found for how to properly plan a trip there were kind of inadequate. And I think I shouldn't take for granted that everybody knows all of these tips about traveling and how to book things. So I wanted to make a more comprehensive three-part video series on how to uh, plan a trip to Argentina and go and see Patagonia. To tell you guys a little bit more about what's actually going to be covered in each of these three videos so that you you can skip the ones that you don't want to watch and maybe skip to the parts that you want to watch. After this introduction, uh, this video is really going to be all about the trip overview, kind of the larger considerations, how does money work, what you should be doing in advance, maybe some preparations leading up to the trip. Um, the second video is going to be all about uh, the packing list. I do think that Patagonia maybe has a, a unique set of needs uh, for what you bring. So I wanted to kind of highlight some of what I think you should consider bringing and also maybe a couple tips on how to properly pack those things so that you can get them all in your kit. And the third video is going to be all about your itinerary and how to actually make the most of your time there because there is a lot to do. Uh, there's definitely too much to get done in any trip, but you definitely don't want to overload yourself. So I'll share with you some ideas of what I think you could do with your days and dig around and find some other things you can do to go along with it. First thing we really need to talk about is the cost of the trip. Your flight down there is probably going to be a little bit more expensive than uh, flying to Europe if you're from the U.S. Uh, it's actually a bit further than I thought it was. I mean, just looking at it on the map, it doesn't look like it'd be any further than Europe, but I had a layover in Houston and then from Houston to Buenos Aires, it's like an 11 hour flight. So it is very far and because of that, it is gonna be a bit more costly, but look around, plan appropriately, buy in advance, do whatever you can, fly on, a, on one of those off days that are a little bit cheaper, try not to fly around holidays, all that stuff, and you'll be able to get the cost of the flight down. Just a few more tips about booking. Uh, you really, if you haven't done a whole lot of flight booking in the past, uh, you really wanna play with the dates a bit maybe move them around and see if you can budge the date forward one day. Uh, maybe instead of flying on a Sunday, you fly on a Monday and it, it saves you a lot of cost if you have access to that kind of flexibility in your schedule with work and how they're gonna give you a vacation. Uh, play with the dates. I would try to book in advance and that might save you some money. Uh, it all just depends on seasons and stuff like that. Finally, with the things that you're gonna wanna do in Buenos Aires, a lot of them are popular. A lot of them are talked about. We're going to talk about some of them in the third video in the itinerary, uh, but they're very popular. You should plan on trying to book a lot of stuff in advance, especially, you know, some rooftop bars, they have reservations. Some certain restaurants are booked weeks out. So if you happen to watch some other videos on on Buenos Aires and you find some things you want to do, you might want to check and see what kind of a lead time they have on when you can get a reservation because they do book up. So as far as the cost of lodging, uh, it's very different. Uh, there's really three places you need to go to. Um, if you're going to do a Patagonian trip, we'll spend some time in Buenos Aires. And while you're there, uh, I just did some checking on both Airbnb and on some different booking sites. I uh, really, you should be looking at $75 a night, maybe less. You could definitely do less if you do like Airbnb or something. But with a lot of the, uh, a lot of the hotels, you get like free breakfasts and stuff. And, you know, maybe there's less hassle. It's all up to you, but, you know, $75 a night will get you access to most of the lesser expensive options. You can definitely spend more than that. In uh, El Calafate, which is where you'd be going next, you should be looking to spend $30 to $40 a night. Uh, there are lots of great options in El Calafate at that price point, uh, especially uh, the one that I'm going to recommend. It's it's in that price range. I and mean, there's some other reasons why you want to stay at a hotel slash hostel rather than booking an Airbnb, and I'll explain that later. And then in El Chaten, the last place that you'll be going to in Patagonia, uh, again, you're probably going to want to stay anywhere you want in that place. You could do Airbnb or you could do uh, apartments, uh, but due to 
the scarcity of buildings, the scarcity of lodging there, it's a little bit more expensive. You should be looking at paying around $100 if you're there. How do you get from Buenos Aires to El Calafate? You will take a flight. Um, but when you go from El Calafate to El Chaten, you will be taking a bus. So uh, I would, again, check stuff in advance. I'd know where everything's at in advance. I'd know your costs in advance, but you will fly a total of four times, once to get in, once to get to El Calafate, once to get back to Buenos Aires, and once to leave. You will take a bus at least twice, once from El Calafate to El Chaltén, and then back from El Chaltén to El Calafate. Prices are always subject to change, uh, but I did want to give you some kind of an idea of the cost that you'll be taking on uh, during those extra excursions, those extra trips. When you take the bus from El Calafate to El Chaten, all the prices that I'm seeing are coming out to around $23 to $24. So that's one way, um, and then you'll have to buy a ticket to come back. So again, $23 to $24 to go there, $23 to $24 to come back. Those might change. And I just looked up the flights from Buenos Aires to El Calafate, and those are running around 150. And I do believe those are round trip flights, uh, but I will double check and I will pop it up here. I guess another thing that you guys should consider is how much does stuff cost? Food is relatively inexpensive, uh, especially if you're coming from the United States. You'll find that quite a few places you'll eat, you'll eat very, very well. You'll have fantastic food and a lot of food, and your bill will come out to like 10 to 20 bucks uh, in restaurants. Obviously there's gonna be some range on this. You can get food far less expensive than that. Uh, you can get some meals that are $3, $4. Um, and then of course, uh, if you go and you find some of the nicer places in town, I'm sure they can run a little bit higher, but you shouldn't expect to spend a lot of money every day. Um, in fact, I think, you know, budgeting between 30 to 50 bucks a day for food is more than enough. 30 to 50 bucks a day is going to be quite the budget for food. You should be good. One of the things that you should plan on doing, and I think it's one of the big reasons why you even go to Patagonia, is to do the big ice trek. That's the, the glacier hiking and all that stuff on the ice. Um, the company that I did that through is called Yellow y Aventura, uh, or in American, that's Hielo and Aventura, if you want to have that pronunciation of it. I just checked prices. It looks like it's running a little bit over 300 bucks right now. I don't remember it being that high, but maybe it was. But anyways, like 325 bucks ish is what you're looking at on that. Yes, I still think you should do it even for that price. It's uh, definitely worth it. Uh, they will pick you up from your hotel. And that's why earlier when I said, you know, between Airbnb and hotels in El Calafate, you should probably book a hotel because uh, you'll have pickup directly to your site. You just tell them where you're staying when you book it and they'll plan on picking you up. It's after breakfast, so you can have breakfast first. They take you to the site where you can kind of oversee uh, the whole glacier. Uh, y'all do some pictures there. You'll take a boat, go across, and then you'll do the whole glacier hike. It's really cool. You might have whiskey lunch out on the glacier itself, and then they will gather everybody up and come home. It's a, it's a long day. It's a full day excursion, although you, you can go out for dinner that night, but uh, you, you should expect you know a good bulk of your day to be taken up by that excursion, and it's totally worth it. Definitely make sure you do that. That's who I did it through. I think most of the agencies are the same roundabouts in terms of like price and experience. Uh, you cannot go to the big glacier without a guide to my knowledge so you will have to book one of these if you want to go to the glacier you have to be with a guide um, and then also uh, as far as expenses go you should also keep in mind that it's like a national park that the glacier is in and i think you still have to pay to enter the national park so if you're going there you should also plan on spending an extra like ten dollars to get into the park, you know, whatever that is in Argentinian pesos at the time. Uh, so just make sure that you have a little bit of cash on you. It's not gonna cost you anything to hike in El Chalten. So that's kind of a wash as far as expenses go. That's good. When you arrive in El Calafate from your flight, uh, there is a bus that goes directly from the airport to different hotels. Like they'll actually take you straight to your hotel. So uh, as long as you know which one that is. I can't remember how much it costs, you know, plan on it being some amount of money. So just have some cash on you when you arrive in El, Ch El Calafate. In fact, I would have all of your cash for El Calafate and El Chaten already with you 
when you leave Buenos Aires because it's a lot more difficult to do exchanges once you're in those two places. It is possible, it can be done, but you should already have your cash with you. And while you're in El Calafate, I don't think it's necessary to use uh, taxis. I think you can get around pretty easily on foot. It's a relatively compact town. It's a very pretty town as well. So I think you'll quite enjoy the walk, but I mean, there are taxis available as well if you want to do that sort of thing, but you shouldn't have any problems getting around. The hotel that I stayed in was called America del Sur, or I think that just translates to South America. Um, it was actually quite a nice hotel. That was in El Calafate. I believe the price at the time was right around 30 bucks. And what's strange is I've been looking at the different ways that you can book that that same hostel. I think they call it a hostel, but you get your own room and your own shower and everything. So basically a hotel. Um, but anyways, what I was seeing was the prices were wildly different depending on what website you were looking at. And if you're balling on a budget, like you're trying to save as much money as possible, the cool thing about that hotel is once per night, they will give you an entree item off of their restaurant. They got like a little mini bar and restaurant inside of their hotel. And it's really cool. It's, it feels very local. Uh, it's not like a, like a, like a regular hotel restaurant where it's like all separated and it's like a dining area. There's like this big community lounge area. I'll roll some, some clips and, and pictures and stuff, but there's this big community lounge area and they have a, a restaurant and you can just get food and it's it's really really good uh, i think a lot of people will choose to skip it only because you have so many nice options in town because that's with it being such a touristy town el calafate uh a lot of their commerce comes from the actual you know glacier tours that they give and you know the hospitality the restaurant business the hotel business so there are lots of really nice restaurants in El Calafate. Um, and if you wanted to, to save a buck, uh, rest assured you're gonna get some really nice food in your own hotel. So it's just something to keep in mind. And I'll just add that yes, that does also include breakfast. We knew we were gonna have to talk about it. And here it is, the complicated money situation in Buenos Aires and Argentina. Uh, and to my knowledge, it has gotten more complicated than it was three months ago. Uh, I'll give you a very abbreviated version of it. And then if you want to do some more research, uh, you can. Uh, but I'm going to leave you with a contact, somebody you should be reaching out to. Uh, he can tell you all about it. He's a local guide in Buenos Aires, and he knows all about the monetary situation. And he can basically tell you what you need to do with your money uh, to make the most of it. The short bit is that for a long time Argentina was artificially propping the value of their currency by eating the cost of difference between the exchange rate of the US dollar and the Argentinian peso. What does that mean? Uh, that means that the currency isn't as valuable as it actually is. Um, they were saying for a long time that, you know, 300 pesos equals one dollar. In fact, it was probably closer to 600 pesos equals one dollar. Some, something along those lines, right? So when you exchange your money, if you do it at any sort of official institution or you use your card or you you know go to a bank ATM, you're gonna get that official rate, which means you're only gonna get 300 pesos. I'm using this as an example, the numbers have changed and they change almost daily, uh, but you were gonna get 300 pesos if you did any sort of official transaction. Whereas there are many people who will give you the better exchange rate, the blue exchange rate, and that was gonna be for that higher value for your dollar exchange rate. So what does that mean? Well, for one, it means try not to use your credit card. Try not to use your debit card. Uh, you should really be taking cash uh, to Buenos Aires and you should be exchanging your cash for cash uh, in the blue rate uh, because any, any kind of transaction that you do with your card, again, it's going to go through a banking institution and you're going to get the official rate. The official rate's the bad one. I believe these figures have been brought a lot closer now. I could be wrong. You'll have to ask that guy. I'm, I'm going to give you a contact and ask that guy. But their new president, I believe, has basically ended the artificial propping of the currency, although I don't believe he entirely got rid of it. So there, the difference is less now, but I could be completely wrong about that. But you'll want to find the people and the businesses that will give you those exchange rates. You should take cash. Uh, you should take cash to 
to Buenos Aires when you go and you should be ready to find ways to exchange that money. There are plenty of ways. The contact I'm going to give you will show you lots of ways to exchange your money and that really should be how you get your pesos, uh, not through any other means. I'm going to add in the contact information for this guy. He goes by the name Martin the Guide. Martin the guide. He is a super cool tour guide in Buenos Aires. He loves his country. He's been through a lot of it. Uh, he's seen lots of the different economic swings and he is a guide. He is probably one of the first people you should see when you go there. You should book him. Um, I've had lots of citywide tours in Europe and in the United States and in several different capitals and the best guide I've ever had uh, for a city by far was Martin. So I would recommend reaching out to him, asking him when he does his tours and, and hook it up with him. Uh, but also heed what he says, because I'm still a little fuzzy on what's happened to the pesos since their new president has taken office. So I'm not really for sure what's going on with it right now. Uh, but I guarantee you Martin's on top of it, but I can assure you that it's gonna involve you taking cash. So still rest assured, you need to bring cash you want to try to avoid using your card of course have it for emergencies but uh, you're going to want to use cash also some businesses will let you use us dollars and some individuals you know taxis and stuff may let you use us dollars you always need to ask first if you're planning on it because a lot of businesses won't but some will last thing on the money topic western union it's probably the best way uh, to get your cash especially if you didn't bring any with you um, I'm not really super up to speed on how it works, but I can tell you that it's basically a transfer of your own funds in the blue rate, in the good rate, to a Western Union facility. So you go and you find one, you make a withdrawal. There, I do believe there are some limits on how much you can withdraw, but it's definitely more than enough for several days. But I'm not going to explain it. You can read more up on it elsewhere. There are people that have explained how it works better than me. Um, and I was totally not privy uh, to it when I went there. Uh, so do a little bit of research, learn about how Western Union works, watch someone else's video on how Western Union works. Um, that is an excellent option as well. And it will save you from the bad exchange rate. All right, done with money, moving on. I'm just gonna knock out some FAQs, frequently asked questions about things you might consider, questions you might have going to Argentina, going to Buenos Aires, going to Patagonia. Uh, question one, is it safe? Yes, yes. Uh, Argentina is really safe. Um, and I'm just, I'm not even going to look up crime statistics. I mean, I was there. I'm sure they have pickpockets and stuff like that, but it's really, really safe. You shouldn't be worried. Two, how do you get from the airport in Buenos Aires to wherever you're going? Taxi. Just take the taxi. The bus could be a little bit complicated, uh, but use the taxi. Three, do you need to speak Spanish uh, to go to Argentina? No, obviously it would really help. Um, and unlike a lot of places, maybe in Europe, you will come across lots of service members, uh, talking about like hotel service staff, maybe restaurant service staff who may not necessarily speak English. So you should try to at least gain some basic phrases. You should know how to ask for the things you need. You should know how to say thank you. Polite stuff at the minimum, I would recommend. But no, you're not gonna die if you don't know Spanish, you'll be fine in English. Do you need to do any sort of fitness before you go to Argentina? Well, it depends on how you mean the word need. There's lots of hiking in Patagonia. And I would imagine if you're keen on going to Patagonia that you'd rather like to do a hike, you can do the hikes without being in shape. I've, I actually saw quite a few heavier set people, quite overweight people who had completed the hike. That doesn't mean that it's easy though. It's definitely a more challenging hike. Uh, especially compared to, you know, if you're not from a super mountainous area, it, it's going to be a challenging hike for you if you're not used to that sort of thing. Uh, so yeah, I would do some preparation leading into going to Patagonia or you're going to have a really tough time uh, doing the hikes. Uh, additionally, when you do the ice hike, when you go to the glaciers, Perito Moreno in El Calafate, that is going to be quite a strange hike because you're going to have these metal cleats put on your feet that's going to add weight and you're going to be picking up your legs real weird and, and just kind of walking really weird like you're going to be doing shit like that uh, and it's going to be more tiring than you might imagine what would i do well i would do lots of squats i would work on your back and your core in different ways 
you might want to try doing some stair stepper stuff and definitely try uh, maybe if you have access to some sort of mountainous area if you don't have access to a stair stepper at least see if you can do a hike that lasts you know six plus hours because there are definitely hikes in El Calafate and El Chatan that will exceed six hours. Another consideration that you may not have had if you're going to Buenos Aires and also Patagonia is that they have very different climates. Uh, Buenos Aires is significantly farther north, which is kind of the opposite for us because they're on the southern hemisphere. So going north is like going south. It's like the difference between New York City and southern Florida. So anyways, um, the further north you go, the warmer it's going to be. I was there in mid-January, and what I saw was uh, Buenos Aires was having daily temperatures and highs around 85 degrees Fahrenheit to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So, you know, quite warm, you know, definitely on the warmer side, you'll sweat a bit. Uh, but when you go down to El Chaltan in El Calafate, those temperatures are going to be much closer to 50 to 60 for the highs. Uh, every day so quite a, quite a difference um, and it can make packing a little bit complicated I'll talk about that in the next video uh, but you're kind of almost packing for two different climates and that might complicate things well if you stuck till the end I wanted to say thank you uh, for watching the whole thing I hope that this was able to help somebody uh, maybe have some kind of consideration that they didn't have before um, I do want to open it up for questions, uh, so if you have any questions that I didn't cover or if you came across something and you just want me to kind of weigh in on it, be happy to. Um, but thanks again for stopping by. This was Legs Will Move, and in the next video we'll be talking about kind of the packing list uh, and maybe how to better pack those items. We'll catch you in the next one. See you.